Hey, everybody, what's going on? Rob Sesternino back with our first Survivor Exit interview of Survivor 46. Now, I know sometimes these videos autoplay, so if you're not ready to hear from the first player voted out of Survivor 46, then get out now. Otherwise, let's get into my interview with the first boot of Survivor 46 here on Rob as a Podcast. Hey, Jelinski, good morning. How are you? What's up, brother? Oh, that bell, man. You know, I wanted that's that for bell you. A little bit that's for you. That's for you. I appreciate it, man. A legend. A legend. And then one we will not soon forget, Jelinski. <laughs> I'd hope not. Seriously. Yes. I'm All right. Honored I... to go down in the likes of Zane and Francesca and yeah. Rain. How you doing today, buddy? I'm doing really good, Rob. Um, you know, I've kind of been in a good place ever since I got voted out because once everybody started following me in Pondy, the first thing they'd say was, man, Jelinski, you are a legend. You are still alive <laughs> in the game. And in fact, like, uh, once the merge happened, like, people came back to me and they said, man, Jelinski, we were going to name the merge tribe after you. Wow. Okay. I was like, what What an honor. Seriously. So I, I can't ask for more. Seriously. I'm super happy I made my mark. Yeah, definitely an exciting episode. Happy to hear that you're taking it all in stride because I know this can be tough to deal with. All right, so Tribal Council, I would love to know from you, uh, how big of a shock was this for you? So um, as much as I would like to say that I was 100% certain it was going to be Jess, there was probably about 10% of me that knew it was going to be me. And I thought that because I knew how big of a threat I was just strategically. So um, the fact that Q was able to clock me uh, did not surprise me. It did not. And um, obviously, like being out there when you have three um, sort of leaders, uh, me, Q and Tiffany, I would say, uh, you guys don't necessarily you won't get along all the time. So especially when you have different ideas, such as me and Q, uh, it, it was bound to happen. So I wasn't necessarily as blindsided as you think. It seemed like that maybe you came into tribal council not knowing, but by the time the vote happened, it seemed like, oh, this is going to be me. Was that a, an accurate description? Yeah, um, I knew it was going to be me uh, after I saw the second Jelinski. I knew there was some hope because I was expecting one Jelinski, and that was from Jess. But after that, um, in a perfect world, it was going to be Jess, 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 Jess. Um, unfortunately, it wasn't. And I was blindsided. And um, I was blindsided. It wasn't a blind side, but I was blindsided. It was actually a unanimous. Nearsighted. Vote. Yeah. 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 Exactly. You got it. <laughs> yeah. I want to talk about everything that happened with the sweat challenge. Do you feel like that Q misread you as a person? Yes. Um, so that sweat challenge was obviously meant to be hard. And uh, something that wasn't shown was Q and I were bonding about being from Memphis. Uh, my family was born and raised in Memphis, and uh, we moved out here to Vegas, and they had me. Uh, Q lives in Memphis. Uh, obviously, he's from Mississippi, but they're they're very close. And uh, a Memphis mentality is something that they get behind is uh, this thing called grit and grind. So it was from the jump, I knew I didn't want to quit because I knew Q would look at me as a quitter. And I didn't want that. So as the challenge was going on and I was tearing up my feet, um, walking on the coral barefoot for an hour and a half, which really messed me up, um, Q had presented the idea to me, yo, Jelinski, do you think we should quit? And I was like, I knew I was struggling. And uh, I mean, I, I could tell Q wasn't doing necessarily the best either because we had just about the same amount of water in each jug. It was hard. So um, when Q presented that idea to me, I was like, yeah, man, let's do it. Let's conserve our energy for the immunity challenge and hope for the best. Because in my mind, I, I was certain that we were going to win immunity. I mean, just looking at Sega, like our tribe was massive. Like I'm 6'4", Banu's 6 foot, Q's 6'1", Tiffany's a strong girl, just played rugby. Like we, and, and Banu is shredded, by the way. Just wait. Uh, I mean, bon, Banu is shredded. Just wait till you see him with, the, with his shirt off. Like this dude is... We were a strong tribe, so us losing immunity was a huge shock to me. Okay, uh, a lot to unpack there. Uh, so do you feel like that Q said one thing to you about, hey, let's quit the challenge, and then went back and told everybody else, like, oh, my God, can you believe Jelinski wanted to quit the challenge? Yeah, 100%. I mean, that's exactly what happened, and props to Q because – 
I didn't even realize that it was going to be spun that way because when we came back to camp, uh, we were both saying it was a mutual decision. And honestly, Q was kind of harboring that horn the most. And so it wasn't even a thought in my mind that he was going around telling people that I was a quitter because Q, it wasn't an idea in my mind to quit until Q had presented it to me. So okay. yeah, major props to Q for being able to spin that. You talked about how physically fit the Yanu tribe was. Why did you guys do so badly in the challenges that you participated in? Yeah, I mean, I wish I could give an answer to you. Um, I, I think, you know, just being out there in Survivor, you've never done challenges like this before. So you don't necessarily know um, the best ways to get this completed. Um, and with that being said, like pulling down on that lizard head while we were trying to get it over, that was actually making it worse because the lizard head kept getting stuck. And we didn't know that at the time until you look back and you're like, oh, we probably should have lifted it up a little higher. And yeah, so we were, I mean, we just couldn't work together as a team. And that's how it goes sometimes. Going back to the sweat challenge, it seemed like that the the holes in the bucket did not seem like that you and Q were attempting at all to try to fill in the holes of the bucket. Did you guys try that? We tried, and those buckets were super difficult to um to keep closed. And how it many was, holes? Several holes in that? Not not quite several. Um, I'd say there were about five holes. And uh, <laughs> so th these holes were uh positioned in a way that you couldn't get your whole hand around it. And and I have big hands, and I couldn't even get my whole hands around it. So it was created in a way that there would be one hole open at all times. <laughs> And you couldn't put your shirt around it. You couldn't put anything in it. It was just you, the bucket, and your fingers. Okay. I want to talk about then you go on the journey. And here you go. And you go out there and you get stuck with uh, the, the skull card. And now you're in the pos position to lie. Um, can you just uh, talk through, like, what, what did we not get to see about uh, that interaction with Tevin and Maria? Yeah, so there was quite a bit you guys didn't get to see. Um, off the jump, uh, I was lying my ass off. And uh, Maria presented a question to us off the rip. She goes, what color was the pin on the voting parchment card? I knew the pin was blue. And I had said that. So when I said that, Tevin didn't know what color the pin was. So Maria actually believed it was me for the longest and then eventually, as I was going back and forth with Tevin, that's when it started to click in my mind. I'm like, Tevin's such a large personality. Do I want to go back to my camp with 12 new enemies and no vote? Or do I want to, or and, and with a vote? Or do I want to go back to my camp with uh, two new allies and no vote? It seemed like a fair trade-off to me. Were you surprised at how poorly the rest of the Yanu tribe took the news about what happened? I was. I was very surprised. Um, I had asked them. I flipped the tables. I was like, what would you guys have done? And they said, I would have lied my ass off. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I, I don't know if that's necessarily the case because you're meeting all these people for the first time and you know eventually we're going to merge. So do you want to make 12 new enemies? I don't think so. It's a lot easier to say something before you do it. Even like a puzzle, for example. We were just now we're on the puzzle and it's a lot easier to say, I could have got that puzzle done, but you weren't on the puzzle. It seemed like that this tribe got very close after you lost the immunity. You're all like seemingly like very emotional. Uh, what was it like uh, in your days at the Yanu tribe? Yanu is a shit show, man. Uh, <laughs> oh, that we, uh, just, just off the jump, man, we were we were all kind of just independent characters. And uh, we, we certainly were close, but everybody had their own agendas out there. And and it was kind of apparent, like everybody knew that deep down in their heart. So there, there was a lot going on out there. We our, our shelter was shit. We didn't have fire. We didn't have any fruit. We could barely open the coconuts. It was a mess, man. Okay. Seemed like that Jess was really struggling during these first three days of the game. Was that your experience also out there with Jess? Uh, with Jess, yes. We could all tell that she was super sleep deprived and she like she couldn't even formulate a sentence at tribal and that that obviously made me feel great i was like man this girl can't even talk of course i'm gonna stay but um it, it, that was definitely my experience with jess that's that's what i'll say um i mean it, but it's hard out there those elements like I, i'd say a lot of the reasons i behaved how i behaved was 
partly because of the elements. Like my feet were so messed up. Um, I lost my water bottle as well. I ended up being allergic to coconut. I had so many gashes around me. There was just a lot going on out there. It seemed like that you and Kenzie had a really strong bond early on. She ultimately is one of the votes against you. Uh, did you see that coming at all? I did see it coming because I could feel the vibe that uh, Q was giving me. And I, I knew because I, I see a lot of myself in Q. And I was like, if these guys are smart, they'll get me out for sure. And uh, they're smart. They definitely know what they're doing. Um, so when, when it was a group decision, you know, that's kind of how it goes in Survivor. You don't want to be the odd man out. But what I will say uh, surprised me was I was surprised uh, Tiff and Kenzie were kind of really uh, gunning for me to stay. And even Banu for a little bit. Um, but Q was, you know, you don't want to, <laughs> when someone's like a, a leader, you don't want to go against the pack. Now, did you have any idea about Tiffany had the beware advantage and ultimately found an idol? I had no idea. And uh, Kenzie and Q were very good at covering that up and hiding it against me. Uh, I didn't even know about that until last night. I was aware Tiff uh, found the beware advantage, but I thought that happened on night four or day four. I didn't realize that that happened on like day one or two. So mm -hmm. I, I was really surprised to see that. Right. You don't think that in any way that Tiffany could have been throwing the challenge to get the key to be able to get her vote back, right? No, nah, there's no way. We're, we're all competitors. Like we, we didn't want to lose that challenge. Okay, Jelinski you had these three days out there what else do we need to know about your time on survivor man um <laughs> you know when i when i came back um to the states and once everybody else started coming back they kept telling me jelinski you genuinely are, are such a legend like you were talked <laughs> about every single day out there almost every single tribal and it was joked that uh they were going to name the merch tribe after me yeah so that, that was like it's a huge honor and uh it genuinely means a lot and i i can't ask for much more than that i'd rather go down flaming and memorable as a first boot than go out um maybe like at fifth place and not be remembered i don't go know big or go it, home yeah exactly okay. exactly that you came in as a student of the game you said you watched every single season three times what did you get wrong in terms of how you were looking at coming in versus how it actually went so in survivor um everything's a variable you, you can't judge how you're going to do based on other seasons. Um, every person is different. Every situation is different. And you got to just be present. You got to be out there, make connections and play the game of Survivor that is being presented in front of you. We haven't talked uh, too much about Banu in your tribe. How's he fitting in? Um, Banu and Jess both didn't fit in and um Banu is actually someone I was super close with out there like Banu didn't have a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with people aside from myself so him uh, voting against me was also kind of surprising but I mean personally that's what's surprising but I mean it's the game of survivor you do what you got to do but I mean you saw the four of us click immediately uh and that that's just how it goes you know if you that's just how it goes in life whoever you connect with you connect with and that's that uh Banu and Jess kind of were the latter of that if you thought that you could get out of the sweat task do you think that you would have made it for past the first tribal council yes okay that i do that would have changed the entire narrative um i who knows like everything affects everything in this game maybe if we completed the sweat task i wouldn't have gone on the journey maybe if we completed the sweat task i would have found the idol mm -hmm. um th there's just so many uh ifs yeah and um yeah, you, you never know what could happen in this game, man. All right. Well, Jelinski, thanks again for making some time to come on. You gave us several moments that we'll be talking about for many, many years. So we appreciate that. All the best to you outside Survivor. Okay, Jelinski? Thank you, Rob. It's been an honor to be here today. All right. And hey, care, Rob. Buddy. Yes. Not all legends win their first time around. Sometimes <laughs> they don't win ever. That is also true. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Jelinski, take care, buddy. Okay. Yes, sir. You too. Right. Bye. Hope you enjoyed that exit interview with Jelinski. Happy to hear he was a good sport about everything. If you like our content, we'd love to make sure that you get everything we're doing. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and get that bell. 
to be notified whenever we've got new content coming your way. We appreciate all of your likes and thumbs up and comments here on Rob as a podcast. Thanks for watching. We'll be back with more Survivor later. Take care. Bye.